What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick AI guide, I'll be taking you through a relatively new tool that absolutely blew me away. That's the retrieval based voice conversion web UI. Now, you probably already heard of things like voice.ai, where you can upload a few recordings of someone speaking and it'll be turned into some kind of AI you can convert your voice with and speak as if they would, such as a president or an actor, etc. It's a really cool tool to mess around with, but of course, it is a paid service or at least somewhat limited. Retrieval-based voice conversion web UI is a completely offline, runs on your own system, voice training and generating slash conversion software that absolutely blew me away with its performance and power. You can feed it anywhere between 10 minutes to 50 minutes or above of clean audio of someone speaking, train it on their voice, which could take a few hours on a consumer graphics card. I have a 3080 Ti, but you don't need anything anywhere near this powerful. You just need to mess around with the settings It'll take a bit longer on slower or lesser hardware. The more VRAM you have, the better. But the point is, it runs on your own hardware and it's incredibly impressive. In just a few hours of training, you can create a voice that's actually pretty recognizable and it's scarily easy to do so. I really do believe this is a turning point for AI. And the best part is it works with singing and it even comes built in with a tool to separate a voice from background music or noise. It's crazy powerful and I'm super excited to show you. Once again, this tool is relatively complicated to install. And the reason I'm looking at a specific readme file here is the project isn't English. So if things sound a bit weird, well, it's simply because they're probably translated. If you have any issues, the GitHub issues page does have a lot of English issues. So you're still able to report and hopefully get things fixed if something goes wrong. And of course, once again, I've created a one line install script for this to make life even easier. So if you find these install scripts super useful, Useful, make sure to click the join button down below or help support me otherwise as these scripts do take quite a bit of time to make especially this one and of course maintain so retrieval based voice conversion web ui there's a voice conversion voice changer software over here that's different i think you can probably use the same model you train here but i'll get to that in another video this one's mainly for taking your voice or someone else's voice and converting you speaking or someone singing or someone speaking into someone else. That's the whole point of it. So let's have a look at this project. To get started, you could follow the install guide here, or of course, use the one line install command, which I'd probably recommend. On Windows 11, hit start and type in terminal. We'll be opening this as administrator. Otherwise, on Windows 10, search for PowerShell and run that as admin, or of course, terminal if you have that installed. Now, inside of the terminal, make sure you see PowerShell. Otherwise, click the drop down here and choose PowerShell. Now, we'll type in IEX space inside of brackets IRM rvc.tc.ht and close brackets. You'll find this in the description down below. Upon hitting enter, it'll connect to my open source one line install script, install git chocolatey, as well as VC runtimes, ARIA 2C for faster downloads. And eventually when it's done, you may see a prompt like this. If you have Anaconda, Miniconda or any conda installed, basically these are bits of software that manage your Python installations. And I'd highly recommend you use one of these as if you're doing tons of AI work in your PC, they may need different environments. Certain dependencies may clash. Having separate environments for each different program really does help. And Conda is a great way of doing it. I have Conda installed, so I'll be hitting Y here. Otherwise, if you don't, you won't see this prompt at all. This script is designed to work with just normal vanilla Python installations. And of course, Anaconda or Midiconda installations as well. Everything has hopefully been thought of. Now, it'll go ahead and prepare the environment and install everything necessary. Then it'll go ahead and pull the latest RVC GitHub commit. Then it'll go ahead and download the latest models required for this. It's around four gigs, so it will take a few minutes to download, especially depending on the speed of your internet. When it's done, it'll go ahead and extract all of the models and required files. Then it'll get to installing all of the requirements, packages, etc. And when it's done, we'll be asked about desktop shortcuts. I'll enter Y 
apply here to create a shortcut. It'll make life a bit easier. Then shortly after, it'll try and launch it. A brand new feature of the one line script is if something didn't install properly for some reason, just hit Y and it should download and install any missing packages. Again, these scripts are always being worked on and improved, so your support is greatly appreciated. So I'll hit Y and enter here if prompted, and hopefully now it'll go ahead and launch. There we go, language English US, and perfect, here's the web UI. All right, so things aren't completely in English. We can right click and convert the page to English if you're using Google Chrome. That should solve most of your issues, as Chrome does a really good job of converting it to English. So we have model inference for taking a specific voice, then pitching an input file up or down, depending on whether you're converting a high pitched to a low pitched voice or vice versa, an input audio sample for someone speaking or someone singing. Then after hitting convert, poof, you'll get your output file, someone else speaking or singing the same way as what you put into it. Accompaniment, vocal separation, and de-reverb and de-echo. In here, we can place an audio file in the input here, or at least the path to one. Choose a model, such as HP2 or HP3. There's tons of different options here. You'll just need to play around with them to see what exactly you can get out of it. Convert, and poof, you'll get separated music and someone speaking. On the train tab, we can easily train anywhere between 10 minutes to 50 minutes and above of someone speaking and create a model out of it where we can use elsewhere. Checkpoint processing allows you to merge checkpoints, I think. Export Onyx allows you to convert your model. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this. And finally, FAQ for more information if you're having any issues here. Anyways, let's begin. First of all, accompaniment, vocal separation, de reverb, and de echo. Let's go ahead and take a song to separate the music from someone speaking. For example, I could take this song here, for example. All we need to do here is remove the input audio folder and drag and drop our audio or song here. All we need to do here is remove the folder from the input audio folder here and drag and drop our song here that we'd like to separate the vocals from the background. So for example, I'll drag and drop this one in. Then for the model, I'd recommend choosing HP5. You can read a bit about what each model does up here. I'll leave everything as is, except for maybe choosing Wave and converting. Wave is just a bit easier for programmers to read if you don't have an audio player such as VLC installed. Now, in a few seconds, you should see it's done. We can navigate to where this program is installed, which by default for the install script is CTCHT Retrieval Based Voice Conversion Web UI. Inside of here, you'll find an opt folder. This is where the output will be. So we have an instrumental and a vocal. Opening both, you'll hear one is the instrumental and the other one is the voice, exactly as we would have hoped. Now, with the voice and background music separated, you can see where things are going. Here comes the longest bit, the training. Now, this is a little bit more complicated as you'll need at least a few minutes of some clean, no background noise, or at least as little as possible, audio of someone speaking in order to train it. Previously, I took two speeches from Joe Biden, these ones here. They're quite long, they're about two hours or so each. I ran them through noise removal in Adobe Audition and removed any speaking that wasn't Joe Biden, or at least in the first few minutes, I skipped through it. And it was good enough. Obviously, the more effort you put into getting clean audio as input, the better the result the output will be. Now that we've got a handful of minutes of someone speaking, and just that person, as little background noise as possible, we can copy the path to this folder and paste it in here on the train tab where we see path to training folder. We'll give it a name such as Biden, in my case, sample rate I'd recommend leaving at 40k, pitch guidance at true, and model architecture I'd recommend choosing V2 here. Then threads for CPU for pitch extraction and data set processing I leave on the max. Following to step 2a, we've already pasted in the folder, we'll leave pretty much everything else here as default. Scrolling down, we can set what graphics cards would like it to use, I'll leave it as just zero, which is my NVIDIA 3080 Ti. Then the pitch extraction algorithm, harvest is the slowest and the highest quality, so I'd recommend leaving it on that. Then scrolling down even further, step three, fill in the training settings, start training the model and index. In here, we can customize how often we'd like our training to save a checkpoint that we can go ahead and use. So saving frequency, if you have a ton of audio, as in more than a few hours, you may wanna push the saving frequency a bit lower as it is gonna take quite a bit of time to go through all of your audio. 
If you have only maybe 10 minutes or so and a relatively good graphics card, you can leave it at five, but this is for you to mess around with. Checkpoints are somewhere around 50 or so megabytes. Trading epochs, they recommend 20 as a default, but you can push this up to 200, for example, for a really accurate voice copy. Then GPU batch size. If you have a 4090, 3090, anything 90 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM, you can crank this all the way up to 40. On a 3080 Ti or whatever graphics card you have with 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I'd recommend putting this at about 20. If you have six gigs, put this at 10, etc. Simple to figure out, and that's a good rough guideline. If you set this too low, it won't use all of your VRAM on your graphics card, meaning that it'll process a little bit slower, or a lot slower, depending on how much less you give it. And of course, if you push this too high, your graphics card's gonna choke, and the process is gonna be slowed down way more than using too little RAM, or of course, it'll crash out entirely. Then save only the latest checkpoint to reduce disk usage. I'd absolutely recommend choosing yes. Cache all training sets, I'll leave as no, as if you have under 10 minutes of training data, you can click yes to speed up the training process, but anything over that, it'll really fill up your graphics card, taking away from time that could be spent training your model. Finally, save a small finished model to the weights directory, I'd recommend choosing yes. Finally, at the very bottom, we have a few options you don't really need to change, and three buttons. Now, while we could go process data, feature extraction, train model, train feature index, we can just click one click training and it'll take all of the settings that we have on this page and run through them in order. So you can click this button and leave your PC alone, assuming you've put in good settings. When you do click it, I'd recommend checking your console for output as you'll see exactly what's happening as it goes on. And this could take anywhere between a few hours to maybe 12 or so hours. It's a great idea to set it up and mess around with at a low training epoch of over here, such as 20, 10, or even five, just to see what happens. When you're ready to go to bed and leave your PC grinding overnight, set it to 200 and forget about it. It's pretty good. Now in the morning, or whenever you choose to return to your PC, you should see in the weights folder him a few different files. Now I took Joe Biden speaking and I let it run through 20 epochs. Then I took 50 or so hours of me speaking and only me speaking, ran it through this as well overnight and got 32 epochs out of it. This took much longer to process all the data, but it still did it. Though there definitely is a point of diminishing returns. 50 hours is completely overkill. Two hours is even overkill. It really just depends on the quality of your data set more than the length. Anyways, when you have a bunch of weights trained using the train tab, we can head to the accompaniment, vocal separation, etc. Run your audio through here, which we've already done in the first step. Finally, we can head to model inference and start here. Now I've copied these files in, so I'll need to refresh voice list. And there we go. We see a bunch of responses here. I'll take my 20 epoch Biden training. And as we're taking it from a higher pitched singer to a lower pitched speaker, we'll need to lower the input pitch by negative 12. We're using octaves here. So there's 12 tones in an octave, meaning that it should sound right. If you don't use multiples of 12, things are going to sound really off. And if you have this set wrong, for example, you're trying to pitch up a higher pitched voice to try and put it in somewhat lower speaking, it's definitely going to sound very weird and breathy. Anyways, from a higher pitched voice to a lower pitch, negative 12 is good. Then we need to set an audio file that will be processed. This is the speaking or singing file. As we separated this earlier, it's in opt here for me. So I'll copy the folder path, paste it in backslash, followed by the vocal. This is the vocal, yes. Okay, so we'll take the vocal and paste in the file name here. Then we can set this to harvest, which is better quality, but the slowest extraction. Otherwise you can set it to crepe, which is the best quality, but it needs a graphics card. I'd recommend crepe, otherwise harvest. Everything else here, I'm pretty sure we can leave as is, and we can click convert here. Now, when we do, it'll take the input singing, apply our trained voice, and it should output something. I haven't tried crepe before. It seems like it's unhappy. What's the reason? ND array, et cetera, et cetera. It's probably crepe. I'll try harvest, convert, and this time it should be successful. 
checking my task manager, you can see there's tons of CPU activity going on here. It's definitely working and converting it as we'd hope, though it's just not telling me anywhere. So we'll need to wait for it to finish. And there we go. We now have output. We have an audio file here. Now, if I click the three dots and download it, you can hear what it sounds like. It's taken the input voice and transferred it to the one that we trained. Obviously, it's not the best, but it's pretty good for 20 epochs. If I put in my own voice that I trained for 32 epochs, for example, and try the exact same thing. So convert, it'll take a short while as well. This time a bit faster as everything's already loaded into our RAM. I'll download it, place it in the same folder. Not that it really matters. And we can listen to this as well. And obviously you can hear my keyboard and things like that in the background as it was taken from me speaking. That's why you need clean audio. The cleaner your speaking audio that you put in, the better it is in the output. Obviously 50 or so hours of me speaking in tutorials is going to include some mouse and keyboard noise. So that comes through in the converted audio, which is annoying, but to be expected. Now let's go ahead and drop this in Adobe Audition or Audacity or something to recombine them, for example. So I'll place all of these in him, then create a new multi-track. I'll include the original voice instruments as well, Biden and my own voice. Cool. All right. So something you might want to do is raise the volume of you or whoever you are speaking as just to make them stand out from the background music as they probably won't be mixed in as well as the original mix. So just raising the volume a little bit or adding some compression could definitely help. Anyways, adding five decibels to these, I'll go ahead and have it as just the original song for a second or two. Obviously not long enough to get claimed. So that's the original. We'll go ahead and use Biden instead. That's crazy. And me. Uh, yep, that's pretty much all I can play, but that's absolutely insane. And the fact that you can do this with literally any song, it's mind blowing. It even does well in really high pitched parts, which is super surprising. For example, I previously ran through Khaled Satellite and we got similar results here. So there's the original, then there's Joe Biden. Pretty good. And then B, which just turned out absolutely terrible. So that's the whole breathy thing. If you don't lower the pitch enough, it is going to sound very weird. Anyways, for the most part, it did get most of the song right. Pretty good. But the funny thing is, is that when you solo out just someone speaking or making noise, you'll hear the flaws in this when it comes to singing. Yeah, anyways, it's actually incredible that this can do it. And for the most part, it's fun to mess around with. Obviously, if I put in more effort getting cleaner audio to train it with, this would definitely sound a lot better. But that's this project. Once again, if you find the one line install command useful, please do make sure to click the join button or support. Otherwise, these scripts do take some time to create and of course maintain this one especially so I was struggling with this for a day or two. But anyways, here we are. Hopefully you enjoy this. This is a crazy project. My name has been Troubleshoot. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Ciao. Video is over now. Over now. Go find something else to watch or just watch this video. I know we had a